Hi creative friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Ashley the Thrifty Chica. Today we're gonna to be creating a gift for any mom in your life who loves plants. And I know so many moms who are huge into plants, so I thought this would be such a fun one to create. And I have a whole series on my channel of different gift ideas for mom, and some are already up, some will be upcoming, so if you haven't yet, check those out. Also, while you're here, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content, and let's get started making some fun things for Mother's Day. Let's talk about what supplies you'll need for this project. You're gonna need some plant pots, and I will leave links to all of this information below so that way you can check it out. Some of my links are affiliate if you wanna use my coupon code, and that way you save 10% off at Cricut. We're also gonna be using permanent glossy vinyl in the colors forest green and lime green, or you can switch it up and use whatever colors you have on hand. And some transfer tape. This is just a little scrap that we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have any scrap material, this is a great project for it because the decals are so small, you really don't need a lot of material. But I'm just gonna cut out a small section and we're gonna go ahead and apply this to the mat. Here's a tip for speed. If you're doing a ton of projects at the same time and you wanna make it faster, if you have a secondary mat, you can break out your secondary mat and you can prep both of them at the exact same time and just switch one right after the other. Or, you can also, if you want to cut both pieces at the same time, tell the software that you're using the exact same color, place one in one section and one in the other. So those are a couple of different ways that you can speed it up um, if you're working on a lot of projects. I have a material set to premium outdoor vinyl and we're using the standard fine point blade. I'm going to go ahead and load this in. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here Okay, this is ready to unload And we're gonna go ahead and load the next mat The world seems small We can sit too Okay, we're ready to unload this. To unload your mat, flip it over and you're going to hold down your project so it doesn't bend. We're going to cut these into separate pieces since these are using the same color for two different projects. So now we're ready to weed our project, which just means to remove the extra materials from it. And we're gonna start in the corner here and just kind of pierce that section in the corner and just lift. I like to use my tool to help guide when it's starting out, just makes it easier. Whenever you're working with something like lettering, you have to be careful for the punctuation and any, any things like dots or periods in there, just because it um, is very likely to get removed. So I like to start with working on a section and as soon as I have that section done, I usually cut away the leftovers just because it makes it a lot easier for me not to go and get this stuck to the rest of my project. So this next section should be blank because we're adding a piece to it later. Yeah, that piece wanted to come up. This piece wanted to come up, so what you can do is take your little tool and hold down that section and then go back over it and it'll come up um, with the vinyl without taking up the letter that way. And here's a period for the punctuation. So we have a question mark. The question mark should stay pretty well, but the period, we gotta make sure we place that in there. There we go. And let's go ahead and remove all of the, the tiny pieces in here. The easiest way to do it is just to roll this around your finger. And when you roll it around your finger, it helps those sections to kind of pop up a little bit and much easier to remove that way. 
I definitely recommend having something like a lint roller handy or a little miniature trash can, something to keep all of the vinyl away from your work surface because it's very easy for your work surface to have things stuck to it or for it to get into your project and interfere with it. So this is the part that goes in the center here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one weeded as well. So I would love to know if you guys don't mind leaving a comment below and letting me know, are you great with houseplants? I am not. I love houseplants. I think they're beautiful. I even worked for a florist for a period of time and I just terrible at keeping plants alive. Like I can keep humans, I can keep animals alive, but plants for some reason, I think I either overwater them or over sun them or under sun them, one of the two, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, maybe you can give me some plant tips so I don't kill everything. That would be awesome. <laughs> okay, this one has a lot of tiny pieces. So I'm definitely going to have to work slowly with it. In fact, I'm going to weed the plant first. I think that's going to be the easiest part to start with. So I'm just going to start working on weeding that and then I'll come back to the lettering. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors. And go back over and I'm gonna start with the letters here so I'm just gonna work very slowly since they're so tiny these are very tiny letters I'm just kind of rocking back and forth with the vinyl so if there's any tension on it that's where I'm gonna stop because that means that it's time to cut it away and that there's too much going on for it to easily pull up so I'll cut that off and then that gives us two different routes to take for this to get removed. Just holding this background here. And now we just have to remove all of these tiny little pieces in here. So same thing as before, I'm using my finger behind it and just kind of lifting this up at an angle. Forever free. have our plant pots here. This is a great time for us to break out either a lint-free cloth to clean them off or something like an alcohol wipe. To see the truth around you from a distance you can tell. Okay so we're gonna cut um, pieces of transfer tape that fit this and this is a pretty tall skinny decal so I don't really have to worry too much about um, how this is going to apply the same way as you normally would on a 3D object. Usually when you're working on a 3D object, you have to make sure that you cut little slits on the transfer tape to make sure that it can bend around the project. Um, but in this case, it's such a small decal, it probably won't even be impacted too much by it. So I'm just gonna cut the transfer tape and then I'm removing this from the backing. So to get our decal started, we're just gonna go ahead and place the transfer tape over it. I'm holding it on both sides to keep control over it. And I'm just going to slowly place this down, trying to avoid any major air bubbles. I usually place it one section at a time. And then we're gonna break out our scraper tool. We'll use our scraper tool to adhere the decal to the transfer tape. So we're gonna go over this and we're gonna just try to press out any air bubbles so that they um, go towards the outside rather than the inside. So usually you start out towards the center and you go outwards. It does take a little while for the decal to adhere. That's pretty standard. Um, I think the biggest mistake that people have whenever they're working with the decal is, you know, running through the process very quickly. And a lot of times when you're creating a project, you're editing out some of the spaces where you're spending a lot of time um, doing something. So, you know, sometimes it takes several minutes to get the, the decal um, properly adhered. And in those cases, if, especially if it's a large and complicated one, um, you know, we fast forward or speed through it and you, you'll notice that on other channels too. So don't be afraid to take your time and, you know, that way you get the best result possible because I want you to create projects that you love and that you're excited about. Okay, let's remove the backing from the decal. Oh, 
Okay, so you wanna hold it in your hand. You can also place it flat and then work on it from this angle, but you'd have to kind of aim down a little bit um, to see that. So I'm just gonna work on it from this direction and that way I can really see what I'm doing and just kind of center this. When I'm happy with the placement of it, I'm gonna start from the top here and just place this down. And I'm holding this bottom section off because I wanna make sure that this top firmly adheres completely before I start moving this downwards. You're also more likely to trap air bubbles in your project if you um, apply it all at the same time. It's better to work in smaller sections. I still have the plant up on this corner and I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere this section first. And then I'm gonna replace this down because I feel like this is getting caught up on that. I cut one little section there. There we go. That way we don't have any major air bubbles. And then I can go back over this section just to make sure it's adhered really well. This is where we're gonna break out a rag just so we can make sure that this adheres completely. One reason that we don't use the scraper tool on something like a 3D object is it's just really difficult to get um, enough pressure across the whole surface. You're really only hitting it with a small section on something like this. And this is why we move to um, a larger rag because you can place greater pressure and it also molds to the object that you're working with. When you're happy with the application, we're gonna peel this back. And you can always lay this back down and work on it more if it's not adhered completely. But the first one is done, and now we're ready to go ahead and take a look at the second one. And same thing with this, I'm going to place this down in the center and then slowly roll this over towards the sides. And go over this with our mini scraper tool. So before we apply this, I want to make sure I cut some slits on both. I'm keeping these together instead of cutting them as into two separate options. I'm keeping them together and so I can keep the, um, the layout and placement exactly the same, but there's still flexibility for this to move around. So I'm going to hold this and just place this over the top. So I'm gonna roll this over and then roll this one over. And I still have these sides kind of lifted up enough that I can work on those. So I'm gonna take my rag and go over both of these sections. And I have a few scraps left that I can use up from the transfer tape. So I'm going to apply this last section.
So we have our project here and we're gonna go ahead and center this in to make sure that it fits. And this is where we have to be a little careful since this is more likely to kind of move around. to remove the piece of transfer tape. And our project is done. So what do you think of the finished project? I think it turned out really cute, right? If there's a project that you're really excited to see and you would like me to show you how to create it, leave a comment below and let me know. Or if you just have a cricket question, I'm always happy to help as well. I hope you're having a wonderful day.